guys, I'm AH Designs and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I am introducing you all to a project that I have been like behind the scenes part of for quite a while. And it's finally my turn to take part in this collaboration and share this with all of you. So I am very excited to say that I am part of the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pattern. Now this is a project that was started by Annabelle and Ben Santic and they have their own channel here on YouTube. And it all started when Annabelle found this pattern for a, like a very cheap price and it is from the 1960s. So the idea basically became that this is a very, this is a quite a simple pattern, but it's also very pretty and looks good on just about everyone. So the idea was that this pattern would get sent around the world to Coztubers and sewists and people with YouTube channels all over the world to take a crack at making the same exact pattern. And once that person is finished with it, with it, they send it off to the next. I have been in line for this for quite some time and I'm really happy to finally have it. Now, the person ahead of me, um, this video is actually probably gonna come out before hers comes out. Before coming to Canada, this pattern was actually in France. And the person ahead of me was Hazario Costumes, which is really cool because I knew for quite a while, quite a while that I was in line for this. So when I met Hazariel in Japan during the World Cosplay Summit, we were actually t able to talk a little bit about this project. So the idea is that we're all supposed to kind of like customize it or make it our own, obviously, right? It's a simpler pattern, so you can kind of zhuzh it up the way you want. Now, I come from a town that has a big sailing community. Like we have a huge, huge event here. All these ships come in, all these sailboats come in. So I decided I want to do a nautical theme, like a sailing themed outfit kind of also a bit of a Sailor Moon reference at the same time. So I'm going to make a pattern to add on, a pattern piece to add on to this that is a little sailor collar. Now, Hazariel actually asked me what kind of theme I was thinking of going with, what colors and such, and I mentioned that theme. And she sent me a little goodie bag full of like little things, and I'm pretty sure these came from her Sailor Moon cosplay, which is just really cool. And there's also little like anchor buttons and stuff like that in here, and some little, uh, little Parisian ones too. So yeah, she sent me a bunch of really lovely things and yes, I will be incorporating some of these into the project. First things first is of course, this is an older pattern and I'm gonna open it up and show you guys a little bit about it. Uh, it's been packaged up again nicely so that we don't ruin the packaging. But um, most of us have so far have made this dress and that is exactly what I'm going to do. I look good in that silhouette. And I want a cute little like sailor themed outfit that I could wear to work. So that's what I'm gonna make. And now I'm going to shift angles here and show you guys this pattern and how I plan to tackle this. So here is the pattern in its little, uh, little sleeve that's been packaged up in. And I'm just gonna take it out real quick. So here's what the back looks like. There's the front. Now there's a very, very interesting thing with older patterns. I noticed this the first time I opened it up. Some of you are probably already noticing on this pattern piece. Is anyone noticing yet? There are no printed markings on this pattern because it is an older pattern. This piece just has a marking that tells you that it's piece A and there's markings for where a dart would go. That is all we are given. There was, I think at one point, all the various necklines marked here, but I think they've been cut into and taped back up so many times that they're not even visible anymore. But that's okay, because I'm, I'm gonna deal with neckline stuff in a second. There's another one. You can see there's a side dart on this one. That's what these little holes are. So you can mark through it. And then there's a little tuck here. Yeah, this is, the, this is the front. This is a piece I will not be using, but this is the belt. Cause I already have a belt that matches the idea I wanna go for here. So this is piece E. It's used for the belt and can be modified of course um, by length and width and all that to fit the, the person who's gonna wear it. This I believe is the sleeve. Yes, this is piece C. Another piece I will not be using. I'm going for the sleeveless route. Here's piece C. And you can see another dart on the elbow. This is for a fitted sleeve for the jacket that you can make with this pattern. And finally, we have the skirt. As you can see, that's not very many pattern pieces. This is, in the grand scheme of things, this is not a complicated pattern, which is kind of perfect for this project where we can really customize it ourselves. And also, of course, as you can see, there's not any size markings. So the fact that it is a simpler pattern makes it so that people of different sizes can take it and alter it to their size without it being super complicated shapes. But yeah, there's your skirt. So this piece, I am just going to measure 
and we're gonna do some cutting. I'm not actually going to actually trace out this piece. And I'm not even gonna use this for a mock-up or anything. I'm just going to measure this skirt piece and that will be that. We're going to be focusing on the bodice for the most part. Now, what is very strange in these instructions is that like the seam allowances are not all the same size. It is like, do this seam allowance, we're marked, and every seam allowance is different. The side seams are different, it's all different. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is I am not going to cut fabric pieces using these patterns because I don't want to damage them because again, this has to go off to the next person. So this needs to be saved. But I am going to trace this out with all the markings and then I'm going to mark out the seam allowances and compare it to my sewing blocks. I might be fortunate. I might have not have to do many sizing alterations. I don't think I will have to. This is actually pretty close to my size already. I'm just lucky in that situation. And then we're gonna see uh, where to go from there to figure out fitting if I need to do a mock-up. Um, I probably will just because I'm doing some neckline stuff. Anyway, let's get my newsprint out and let's start tracing these bad boys out. Okay, so I'm looking now to look for my seam allowances. This has a center back seam and, or a zipper. And I'm going no, because I'm going to adjust this neckline so I can fit my head through it. And so I can put a sailor collar, which needs to be a deeper V. So, I'm taking out the seam allowance on the back. So in this case, I'm going to draw it on and I'm going to keep it on the pattern, but I am gonna fold it away and cut this on fold instead. So according to this, half an inch turning is allowed on all seams, which I'm assuming means seam allowance, except otherwise stated. Now, most of them are otherwise stated, which is kind of annoying, but anyway, I'm going to just mark in those seam allowances. So we're putting a half an inch down my center back. Boom. There's your seam allowance, which I can now deal with later. Here, on the, sh on the shoulders, it says, taking three quarters of an inch turning, close shoulder seams matching notches. Shoulder seams have a wider seam allowance. So we're gonna go in, find your three quarters, and we're going to mark in that seam allowance. So I now have these patterns all nicely resized a little bit. I just have to take them in a little bit at the chest because I am not as busty. I have the complete opposite problems of some of the other girls who have done this pattern already. So I am so sorry. Sizing up the bust is very difficult. Sizing it down is not. So I'm sorry I got out of this as much easier. I could say this is all nice and done, but I want to make this a sailor collar outfit. So I've decided to reference one of the nicest sailor collars I have ever seen. And that is from the Card Captor Sakura cosplay that my friends over at Needle Workshop made. So I actually have the summer uniform out right now. And I'm going to reference the size of it because it is beautiful. They did such a great job. The hem is flipped up. But this is a beautiful, beautifully done sailor collar. So size wise, I know for a fact that I can get my head in through this without any closures. So I now have a size to go off of for figuring out how deep or where the V should go on this one. So having a physical garment on hand to reference and look at is very helpful. So yeah, I'm going to take a look at this do some measurements and apply it to the pattern. And then I can make the sailor collar pattern off of that. Okay, so I'm now preparing to do the, the sailor collar. I'm going to take this and put this right here. I'm gonna get my tracing wheel out. So with the tracing wheel, I'm gonna trace out basically the only the things I need for this particular pattern, which is in this case, I need this line here. I need this line here. I'm gonna get this line just in case. Uh, I do have my mat down, so I do not ruin my table. I mean, too late, I already have. And what I'm doing is I'm not tracing the seam allowance, I'm tracing this line here, because that's where it will all line up. You'll, you'll see what I mean. So, we're just gonna carefully, this is why I need that thing, because I'm using my tracing wheel here. And I'm following what is the stitching line, not the actual seam allowance. Now, you probably can't see it on camera, but now I have these little lines. Now with my pencil, I fill in those lines. And I am now going to put a little line half an inch around right here. Now that is because I'm going to line up my other piece and this is so that the collar lies flat when I finish it. You'll, you'll see what I mean after. But I'm just gonna go like this. I'm going to fold away this seam allowance because I don't need it right this second. Now, usually when you're sewing, you would put these guys, you would butt them up. You would like, like, like this. Seam allowance line, like seam line against seam line. Kind of like that. But 
this would create a little weird uh, gaping on the shoulder. So when you're working on flat collars, like a sailor collar, you're gonna bring it down a little bit. So now that these are lining up, I retrace this all back on. So I lined it up with this line, not that line. And now I can just fill in my neckline real quick. So now you're starting to see what my neckline looks like when the pattern pieces are combined. Now I'm gonna look at that pattern, that example again. I don't wanna copy it exactly, but I do wanna get an idea of how wide it gets. So we don't want this to be super pointy. And basically I can just kind of go in and draw in what I want it to look like. So I want it to be nice and round like that, it can be. This will be the center back on their pattern. My center back's right underneath it. Ideally with a sailor collar, you want this back center back line to be parallel with this line here. And that is the base of a sailor collar. I will add some seam allowance, I'll clean it up a little bit. I'll figure out exactly how long I want this to be, but that is the base of a sailor collar and what I'm going to try on my, for my first mock-up. I'm going to go cut out some mock-up pieces and we're gonna try this all out and see if it works. Okay, so we're now in the sewing room. I have all of my pieces cut out from my pattern. I did a mock-up very quickly of the bodice and it fit actually very good, especially around the side seam areas. I just had to actually fix it on the neckline a little bit and that was about it. I have gone ahead and cut out the pieces in this really lovely um, blue poly cotton twill. I got this off syfabrics.com. Uh, it's relatively, it's not super, super expensive, it's, but it's quite nice and it's thick, so I don't need to line this. So I have all these pieces. The edges are surged on most of the edges. And there are a few areas I can start on sewing this. One is I could just start putting the bodice together, but I think I'm actually gonna start with the collar and get that out of the way because in order to finish the bodice, the collar needs to be installed. I have two fabrics to make up this collar. So here's what the final collar piece looks like. This is leftover fabric from my Omoe cosplay. It has that lovely striped texture on it. And I figured that'd be really cool against the twill. And actually I really do like how it looks against the twill. Heavily, like I have an, a decent interfacing here so nothing shows through. And so that it like lays properly and isn't too floppy. Cause this stuff is very, very floppy. For the underside of the collar, I have this um, cotton. It's just a basic cotton uh, broad cloth of some kind, also interfaced. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take that piece that's gonna be the outside, you're gonna see it on the outside of the garment and not the underside, and I'm going to figure out where I wanna lay down my trims. Now, I've decided I wanna probably use the sequin trim that um, has Ariel sent me because it is the, almost the exact same color as the blue, but I'm gonna top stitch that stuff on first and foremost. I'm going to find where my seam allowance line is, see how far I want this line to be from that edge. And I'll probably do what I did on my Saki's out paper and with all the top stitching here. And I'll probably just mark the line and then put the trim on top of the line because it will just hide the line in the end. So yeah, that's probably what I'm gonna do for that. I'm gonna trace, trace on the line and then I'm going to top stitch the, the trim on both sides of the trim because it's pretty wide. Once I have that trim applied, then I can sandwich the pieces together, right sides together and put the underside of the collar on there as well and I'm gonna leave the neckline part of it open. And that's because I'll be dealing with that once I get the rest of the bodice done. But yeah, I'm gonna start with getting those trims on and we'll see where we go to from there. I now have this super cute sailor collar all ready to go. I love the shape of it. Thank you my friends over at Needle Workshop for having such a good uh, pattern for me to kind of base it off of. But I really love it. It's looking very cute. And now I can go on and work on the bodice. So for the bodice, I have actually taken a lot of the wild seam allowances off because let's be real, there were some really strange seam allowances on, like they were all different. I need to do darts first. So I'm gonna take my patterns, I'm gonna take the, the cut out fabric pieces, mark out my darts and such with some chalk on the inside of the garment and mark down all those darts and sew them all down. And then once that's done, then I can do the neckline. But first I have to do my darts. So darts will be looked after first and then I'm going to do that neckline and then attach the collar. So once the, once the shoulder seams are put together, um, then I can put on this piece, but there's also another piece I need to do, and that is a facing that goes on the inside of the neckline, and that's just to encase stuff so you don't see things when it's done. That will just get slipped on the inside of the garment. It might even get top stitched down a little bit, but I'm going to essentially sandwich all those pieces in together onto that neckline, and then the collar will be attached to the, uh, to the whole thing. I'm excited. This is going very well so far. I am in love with the sparkles on this. This is gonna be so cute. 
We can tell that I'm doing this at night because I've made the same mistake twice now where I've put them in the wrong order for the collar. So if I were to flip this inside out, the facing's on the outside. So uh, I'm gonna unpick that because it works. I just, I put everything in the wrong, I sandwiched it all in the wrong order, so. All right, let's do this again. I think I have it the right way, finally. Gosh, I feel so silly making the same mistake a few times, but we, we're, we're getting there. It worked this time. Flip this in here after I clip some corners and such. This will be on the inside. The facing will be on the inside where it's supposed to be. And the collar will be on the outside. So I'm gonna clip in some corners so that this flips over nicely. Flip it over, bring it over to the sewing machine and start to understitch it. Understitching to flip it over later. So yeah, we're gonna do some of all this stuff so it flips over nicely and has a nice clean finish at the end. Essentially is what we're doing. All right, so this is the point I am stopping at. Most of the bodice is now finished besides dealing with the armholes and the side zipper. But most of it is now complete. So we got the darts in, we got the neckline in, and that is where I'm stopping for today. The next thing to work on will be the skirt, and I will check in when I work on that next, which might be tomorrow. I don't know, I have some plans tomorrow, but. Okay, so it's now several days later. I've been really busy with a lot of stuff, just life stuff in general. Have not had time to sew, but we're back to sewing, so. Zipper is ready to go in once I get the skirt on. So it's time to put the skirt together. In this case, the skirt is rectangular pieces. So I'm going to start by just seaming them together, leaving one side open and that side will be for where the zipper goes. First, I gotta put the skirts together. So I'm not doing any French seams or anything because all of the edges are surged. So we're just gonna seam them together as normal. Once they are all seamed together, then I can figure out what form of pleating or gathering I want to do. I've seen a few of the people who have done this collaboration pleat it in, and I think it's really, really pretty. And I think with some of the sharper points and stuff like that that are in this design, I think the pleats and like the structure of the fabric would look really pretty with big pleats. So I'm gonna try some stuff out. We're gonna see what I end up doing, but I think I'll end up seaming it together at the waist with pleats, probably, unless I really don't like how it looks. So once those are in, then I can deal with zippers and hems and stuff like that. Okay, so it is now all sewn together at the waist. I have it pressed up on the inside, so part of the seam allowance is pressed upwards, part is pressed downwards. So these line up nicely with my little uh, tucks, so that looks pretty cool. There's a lot of volume in this skirt, which I do love. It's, it's gonna be very nice to wear. But now to deal with the zipper. So I just went to my stash and I found this one here and all I really need, gonna be a simple left side seam zipper. I'm going to, I haven't actually applied one like this in a while, so we're just gonna plop it in there, see how it goes. Hope I don't cuss at it too much. Cause again, it's been a while since I've done a zipper like this, but I also have done so many zippers that this should be fine, I think. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go apply the zipper. And once I apply the zipper, I can deal with the side seam, the left side seam, because once I put the zipper in, then I can do the rest of the seam allowance and close it off. And once I have that closed off, I can deal with the hem, because the hem can't be done until the seam is completely enclosed. Zipper, side seam, hem. Those are my next goals here at this point. I have now tried the dress on and fits good. I really like how it's looking and it is attached now at the waist. I really like my pleats a lot and I really like how this is looking, I like the color on me, so yeah. It's looking pretty good. Uh, I have added a lot of extra on the hem and as you can see, I have pinned where I want my finished hem to be. So I'm gonna take off quite a bit here before I work on the hem. How I'm gonna make sure I keep it nice and even is I'm just gonna pull just like I did to actually cut these pieces. So we're just gonna pull the pieces until I have a nice little, uh, straight line and a straight hem. Once that's done, I can press up the hem and then I could just stitch it down. Pretty simple hem, pretty straightforward. Roll it over twice and I'll be done. So that I'm looking forward to. 
And then once I have the hem done, then I'll check in to see where I'm at from there because then I'm on to finishings. All right, so I got a nice little hem in now, and I wasn't sure how I wanted to finish off the um, the armholes, but I have decided I'm just gonna hem them again. I have them surged, and instead of putting taking the time to cut out bias and all that, it's gonna do the same job. So I'm just taking this in, folding it in, and I'm gonna pin it down. Maybe I'll even press it ahead of time, and I'm just gonna stitch it down. That is that is it. That a very simple clean finish for the armholes. Again, it's gonna create the same purpose as I put a bias binding around it, so I might as well just, just do it this way. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I am going to press these down, top stitch it down, and then the armholes will be done. And I can deal with the other finishings. The other finishings will be once I have this down, then on the, the left side, I can put some hook and eyes to actually close the top of the dress because there's a zipper, there's a little bit of a space there. And then I can start to focus on the bow. But I will talk more about the bow when I get to that. So let's go do this right now. All right, so we now have a dress that's in one piece. Uh, ended up being a little shorter than I intended, but that's okay because it's actually a really cute length on me when I tried it on. The next thing to do is to deal with some kind of detail here. One option would be to kind of make like a little wrap around, but I feel like that'd just be a lot at my neck when this is already quite a bit. So I've gone and taken some scrap pieces and just kind of played around with some shapes. I'm thinking I'm gonna make like just a one little bow with a little center piece essentially that just kind of like hangs out here because I don't want anything too bulky. So I'm gonna probably make it out of red instead. I have some of the nice muted like reddish pink color left over from my Yona in linen. It's really pretty. So I'm thinking I might just kind of do that. I don't even think I'm gonna line the piece. I think I'm just gonna hem it so it's nice and lightweight and doesn't create too much bulk because otherwise this will have a lot more weight to it. I just want just a tiny little thing right there. I'm essentially going to trace this piece on to the red fabric, add a little bit of hem allowance, hem it all up, and then I'm gonna make a little middle piece and we're gonna figure out how I wanna attach it to here. But yeah, that's the last little piece to deal with and we're getting there. So I have completely finished the dress and honestly, I am super, super happy with it. It turned out basically exactly how I hoped and I am super glad to have been part of this project as a whole. So this has been a really fun little, like I guess palette cleanser also, between some of my larger projects that I've been working on, like my Sakizo, which I'll be getting back to very soon because there's still a piece left to make. This has been really nice to just work on. It did not take as much time as some of my other projects. So it's nice just to have a shorter term project and one that I can wear day to day. Will I be wearing this to work? A hundred percent, yes. I also have gone ahead and paired this with a little white belt that I have in my closet and some little gold shoes as well that kind of pick up the, the colors here and I just like the way the colors look together. So all in all, this is my finished traveling pattern dress. This pattern was really interesting to use. I'm not used to using older patterns and recently I haven't been using commercial patterns at all. So I'm really happy to have taken this piece which has been in the hands of countless people around the world and still has plenty of places to go. I will be putting a link in the description below so you can see all the other outfits that other people have made using this exact copy of this pattern. And of course this video will eventually be in that playlist as well. So be sure to go check out the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pattern playlist. Support all the other amazing people who are in this chain of amazing costumers and creators. And I am looking forward to finding out the next name so I can send this. And whenever I do, I will be sure to put a notification in my community tab to let you know where I am shipping this pattern and who will be talking about this exact project next. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Uh, my Sakizo project's almost complete, so you're gonna be seeing that very soon, and I hope you enjoyed this project. So uh, I guess I will see you all later. Bye.